Here's a story. Thieves with taste take a bite out of the hub. Imagine you and your team hit Boston and take 40,000 in clothes and designer bags, 6,000 in diamond watches, and over 75,000 in flawless diamonds. In two days, you rack up $120,000, just a normal weekend for the approval gang. Oh, and did I mention this was 20 years ago and you were the only one that did time, trapped in honors. Seven years of my life. Seven. Gone. Kids was one in five when I left. One in five. My son, my babies was crying. And I still left. Greed. Just greed. There's no other word to explain it. Just greed. It's not worth it. It wasn't worth it. It took a lot for me to get up here and tell my story. What's good? My name is Chris Dallas, Trapped Anonymous. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for everybody supporting us, keeping the movement moving. Y'all know how this thing goes. I just really appreciate all my listeners, my viewers. Um, you know, we working. We working. We working on making things better, getting these stories out to the public and, you know, starting that healing process. Uh, Trapped Anonymous has been on such a journey and I am so, so proud of of where we are right now and where we have to go. Um, do remember that the stories that you hear do not necessarily reflect real life. They're here to entertain, educate, and just keep your little homie off the streets. For this particular story, some of the names, dates, times have been changed and altered to protect our constituents. Um, so just please enjoy it and 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 know these things are... Uh, it's only entertainment. Don't get me indicted. My name is Chris Dallas. Let's get it. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm good. Um, traditionally, start my interviews. Which, what's your name and, and why your story is important? My name is Denisa and I go by Bella. Um, my story is important because maybe I can save another life. Okay. So take me to exactly what it is that you were doing? It's called the approval game. So what I would do is hire a crew. They'll go inside the candy store or go inside of a jewelry store and make a purchase. When they call decline, they'll contact me on the other line. Okay. And what do you say? Why Why are they contacting you? So they card decline. So they go in there and they make a purchase for about $65,000 and they card decline. And typically when your card decline, the sales rep tell you to contact your bank. But instead of contacting your bank, you're contacting me. The same thing your bank would say, thank you for calling Visa Merchant Services. Sarah, can I get your account number, please? Expiration date, name as it appears exactly in a card and amount of purchase. Well, I'm in here doing a purchase for $65,000 and for some reason my credit card is declining. Sure. Um, I'm going to speak with the merchant. I get on the phone with the, mer the, the, the sales rep, get on the phone with the merchant, which is me. I ask them for their visa merchant number. The sales rep give me their visa merchant number. After she gave me their visa merchant number, I ask her, can she ask the customer for the last four for her social? Same thing your bank is saying when you call on your credit card to call. Oh, shit. The last four of so your social? A, a pen, your mother's maiden name. And, I, and I, she verified all that with me. I make sure that everything is accurate on the customer's account. Get back on the phone with the sales rep. I have an authorization code for you. Do you have a pen and paper handy? Give her the 006942 authorization code. And I asked her, do she need assistance with the transaction? If she need assistance with the transaction through her terminal, I assist her with that. You know what? <laughs> this works. <laughs> okay, so where's the money coming from? Your guess is good as mine. It's coming from the bank. That's why they FDIC insured. So it's to my understanding that when their terminal cuts off, this sort of like this glitch in the matrix, so to speak. Manual transaction is what it initially is called, or forced sale. Initially, um, 
companies and banks are not supposed to do offline for sale. However, when the other party is on the phone and they think it's a Visa merchant service, they continue on with the transaction. Mm. What year were you doing this? Um, I would say back in 97. 97. This is the 90s. The 90s. You can't do this stuff today. Why you can't? <laughs> okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, okay. No, uh, let's make it clear. I'm not doing it today. Okay. Yes, let's make that very clear. Abundantly clear. You're not doing this today. No. All right. So, how do you find out about this? Like, how does a person even know that you can do this? That's a good question. I was introduced to the game by a young lady hmm. who told me that she was getting the authorization codes from her friend that works at a check cashing place. Come to find out, she was making them up herself. Just saying numbers. Just six digits. The same digits that's be on your receipt at the end of your receipt that says authorization code. Right. What made her choose you? What made her choose me? It's a good question. I'm driven though, so mm. like I'm, I'm just I don't know. I'm just. One of them type of young ladies that stuck out in the back in the day when I was young. How old were you? Um, I would say seventeen. Seventeen years old. Mm -hmm. She tells you about this loop or this scheme. Um, does your life change immediately? Talk, talk, talk to me about that first time y'all go out and you actually see that what she put you on to works. It's like a rush. Like, it's like you're on drilling and it's just going. Once you hit one bank, you want to go hit another one and another one and another one and keep going. Going in there asking for $85, $9,500 cash advance. Right, but we were talking about making purchases in stores. How can you go into a, a, a bank? Same thing. As you say, candy store. Same thing. You go in there and ask for it. You would like to get a cash advance off your visa. Mm. You ask them, is there, is there a limit? No, it's not a limit. Usually you will go in there. And, typically, I'll go in there and ask for eighty-five dollars or $6,500. So just imagine me going to five banks asking for sixty dollars to $8,500. I mean... 7, 14, 21, 28, <laughs> <laughs> yes, like 30,000, how, how much money it is. So, but, okay. I mean, I guess like, I'm just flabbergasted because this too is the 90s, right? Mm -hmm. So like 8K in the 90s, I mean, today we're talking about, I don't know, roughly about $17,000, $18,000. That goes a long way back then. What is a 17 year old doing with 40? Living life? $40,000. Living life. Just being reckless. Mm. Greed. Just every, just being reckless. So do you continue to work with this lady? Eventually I continue on and eventually I go my own way and get my own little crew and have them. Talk to me about in. your crew. How did you comprise them? How did you uh, do your selection? What, what was sort of that process like? They had to be well-groomed. Um, intelligent and a good listener. Hmm. Okay. Sort of like the malleable woman, but still fitting sort of this idea of, I don't know, like a gentle, pretty sort of aesthetic. Okay. So when you're going into these banks and um, stores mm -hmm. and they're calling you what numbers are they using how are you getting the number for them to call because wouldn't that they call an the 800 number okay so how are you getting an 800 number <laughs> is that too much is that too much sauce <laughs> how am i getting an 800 number right 
a company through Grasshopper. It's a business line. So basically, you set up the number through Grasshopper as a business line and you transfer it to your cell phone. So when they're calling the 800 number, it's ringing to my cell phone. Mm. And I have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a lot of questions. Okay. And, and how are you getting these IDs and, and cards and, and stuff like that? We had an ID guy who made the IDs, whatever state we needed. And as far as the cards, it can be an old card that we had that don't work no more. Hmm. You gotta, you have to understand that they think they're calling our bank, but they're really calling us. Right. What is sort of your breakout day doing this where you're just like, you know what? This is, I'm making crazy money. Like, and you're like, yo, it's up. I'm gonna be rich forever. I don't know, sort of that proverbial thing that you that goes off in your head. What do you mean by that? Sort of like Elaborate. what was like your best night? What was like your best day? What was like your best run? Um, as you assemble your crew, y'all get together and I don't know, something like a light bulb goes off for you and it's just like, you know, we rich. I wouldn't say not necessarily rich. I would say because we was reckless then, like, you know. It was like it, the, as fast as it was coming, as fast as it was going. Mm. Eventually, I got pregnant, had a baby. So now I was to the point where I gotta make some wise decision because mm. I'm a mom now. So being reckless was something that I had to take into consideration. Mm. You told me that you. It hit a spot and I guess a couple spots and y'all came off with $75,000. What is this split like? Is this like a 50-50 split between you and your partners or is it sort of like 80-20? Like how do you... No, 80-20. Straight down the middle. We play fair. Mm. I also say that because when you think of these operations, you think there's a man at the helm. Typically, mm -hmm. when you think of these big time schemes, scams, white collar crimes, you know, you, you, sort of, you don't think a woman is behind, you know, all of this stuff. Sort of like, how is your respect in the game? How are people looking at you being a woman and there's nobody over you? Well respected. Wasn't no man behind me. I was doing all the tricking if I did have a man. <laughs> he wasn't. I didn't have a man at the time, so, you know, I had a, my, my, eventually, like I said, I had a baby, but me and my son's father, he wasn't the breadwinner. I was the breadwinner in the relationship. Mm. So I came home with the money. What kind of things were you buying for him? I bought him a car wash. A business? Mm-hmm. Bought him a business. Um, clothes. Shoes, jewelry, whatever he wanted. What was sort of your scariest moment um, trapping? My scariest moment trapping? Um, I can't really say I ever had one. I had a scare. Really? Because I never got turned down. Whenever I went inside of a candy store or a jewelry store, I never got turned down. It, they said they called me a gemologist because I was so good at knowing diamonds, eyeballing diamonds. <laughs> said you would grab the magnifying glass. I would grab the magnifying glass. <laughs> Let me see if it's a VVS, I in color, G in color, H in color. Wow. Eternally flawless. I don't want nothing less. What are you doing with this stuff? Are you just like being the fly girl on the block? Like... Obviously, when you go into a candy store, you're taking that money. But when you're buying these clothes and these bags and these shoes, what are you doing with it? Just just being... I had, had a, a pretty good clientele when it came to the jury. So I would sell the jury. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said it would work often. About how... If you would... Out of 10 times, how, how many times would you say? 10. 10? I would never get turned down. When I went in, now as far as my workers, 
you know, things was, di was different when it came to them. Because you have to go in there with confidence. Like, this is yours. You know? Mm. I'm coming in here. I would like to get a cash advance. It's my money. Only thing you can do is say yes or no. The object of the game is to get to the phone. You can't get to the phone, then you know it's, it's a no. Did you ever feel like this was something you could do forever? I mean, with this much success, with this much money, with a crew that's, you know, ironclad, did you feel like, yo, Of I'll... course you think that in the beginning. Yeah. You big headed, you think that this can go on forever. You can go and spend the money and then turn around and make the money. It was so young. What about school? Are you, are you pulling up to school? Like in high school? I mean, are, are in you? foreigns, mm-hmm. I had a acro legend at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling up 17, 18 years old to high school. Did, were you able to finish school? Yes, I was able to finish school. College? No. I ended up going to a community college and getting an AA degree. Mm. You had a full scholarship. Full ride. Cal State East Bay. Didn't take it? Didn't take it. Life was just too um, enticing. I wouldn't say, yeah, I would say too enticing and chasing after the bag, trying to make sure my child didn't go through the things that I went through as a kid. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, okay. What was the average week for you? Um, in the game, as money wise, like what was the average week? Average week, about sixty five thousand. Yeah, I can't even. I can't even imagine that kind of money now, in twenty um twenty four. So you know, just are you investing your money? Are you getting? Are you? Are you buying businesses for yourself? Are you? Going into the, I guess, stock market? Like, what do you, like... Eventually, I did. Later on down the line. Later down the line. What kind of businesses did you have? A laundromat. And this was solely to, what? Wash the money? Or was it... Or were you actually washing people's clothes? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a, a service. Oh, okay. Yes. You, you know, sometimes they Where just have... Where did you get to wash the money from? <laughs> because you would need to, you 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 have you're making sixty five thousand dollars a week. Mm -hmm. You need some kind of I don't know something to say like where this money is coming from. How I'm getting I don't know. Maybe you had a really booming laundry mat business, right? Like right something to sort of you know cover that up. But what kind of are you taking trips? Are you going around when you going traveling everywhere all across the world? We could just pick a state on the map. We will literally get the map. Pick the state and go. Also in my mind, it's like you are not able to run this scheme in the same place over and over, right? No. You have to get on a flight and travel. You had to get on the road. You had to get on the road. You 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 mean your 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 references as saying that you can't do it in your own state or? My reference is you can't go into the same store twice. You can't go into the same bank twice. You have to find somewhere else to go because they're going to be Absolutely. like, somebody keeps coming in here asking to speak on the phone and, you know. Absolutely. Eventually. After about six people later. Yeah. You running a store down with six people? I mean, I'm just saying like oh. periodically speaking. Yeah. Okay, okay. You saying that nobody can't go in there twice yeah, after about six people and already went into that candy store. Of course. What kind of men are you dating? Drug dealers. Have you, it's just, because you're a boss in my mind. As you're telling me the story, as I think about it, you're a boss. Is it hard for you to find someone to deal with or do you always have to find sort of like that drug dealer to, to, to be with? No, it was more, I think it has a lot to do with, like I said, my upbringing. Because mm -hmm. my mom used to always say that, never depend on a man. 
Mm. Always have your own. You always got to be strong. Always have your separate bank account, separate everything. And I think that, you know, from her saying that, it's instilled in my mind that I can never depend on a man. So that's how I was raised. I never depend depended on a man for anything. Do you remember how your lifestyle changed from like being like 16 when you didn't have money to being now 18, having cars, money, businesses and all this? It came with a lot of jealousy and a lot of hate. Talk to me about that. Um, well, I've always been the type of person or friend, like we all go shine, not just one of us. Mm. So, um, I had a couple of girlfriends that, um, well, in particular, my, my little play sister, and I met her through my son's father, my kid's father. And, um, she was really young. She was a stripper. And it started off, started off like as, you know, peaches and cream, you know? I asked her if she wanted to come to New York to get her first watch and she said yeah and it was up from there mm. she was my she's my lookout so basically if she come in the store with me she don't she just sit there and be pretty and make sure she don't see no funny business hmm What kind of watch did she get? She got a Jacob and Company. Oh wow! Oh yeah, those were those was um those are kind of like the it watches back then. Oh man, I could only imagine what goes through her mind and how she starts to view you in reverence to you. Sort of just seeing, wow, she just picked up, took me here, and now I have the most expensive thing that I've ever owned in my life. You, you you probably had her eating out of your hand at, at some point or just listening to anything that you would say. Mm -hmm. um, she was younger than me, too. Okay. Did you have any role models growing up? No. Did I look up to anybody? No. Why? I guess the environment, how I was raised. My mom was an addict, so, and a lot of stuff about my childhood is, is very vivid. Like what? Whew. I just try to like e erase the memory, you know? I really don't remember a lot about it, but I do remember my mother was a functional addict. I had, um, my auntie said that I was slew footed. She said she don't know how I ended up walking because my mom used to be too high where she could never get me out of bed. So I learned how to walk in bed, basically. I wasn't raised in a two-parent household. I wasn't raised with a silver spoon. I had to get it out the mud. Um, alcohol and drugs was all around me. That's all I seen growing up. My mom was a, she was a booster. So I remember this one event, we were in Sears. And this was the first time we got caught stealing with her. And my grandma had to come get us. Mm. This is your mom. Your protector. Mom. Someone that you should be looking up to. And here you are getting caught stealing. What were your feelings towards your mother growing up? Um... Growing up, I seen her struggle a lot. You know, my mom, she didn't know how to drive or nothing. And um, 
I seen her work jobs after jobs to take care of us. My dad was in the picture, but he passed away when I was 11 years old. Mm. He had lung cancer. What kind of man was he? From my recollection, he was a good man. I was a daddy's girl. Mm. Yeah. What kind of woman was your grandmother? My grandmother was a king. She was a queen pen. She was a drug dealer. She sold everything. She'll sell you if she could. She sold ices, candy, pills, crack. She used to tell my cousins that if you got a P-U-S-S-Y, you gonna come back in this house broke. Mm. So like I said, she, if she can sell you, she'll sell you, like literally. Yeah. She used to make us um, pay for rent to stay with her. And when I look back at it, it taught us responsibility, you know? We can stay in our house for free. Hmm. Yeah, my grandma was a hustler. I guess knowing that, that the kind of neglect that went on in the home that a child teaches themselves how to walk, the neglect that is happening, what's birthed out of that, right? What's birthed out of severe neglect? You grew up in the projects. Acorns. They used to call it the children of the acorns. Where's that located? It's in West Oakland. Oakland. Mm-hmm. The Bay Area. You become this teenager that's now a super product of her environment, right? Because your grandmother just wasn't a drug dealer. She was the drug dealer. She was the drug dealer. You became the pinnacle of, I don't, how do you, what do you call, you call this the, what do you call it again? Because it's not like credit card scamming in my mind. It's called the approval game. The approval game. Yes. <laughs> Everything getting approved. <laughs> you, <laughs> not funny. <laughs> you created, you created your own style of. It's not funny. It's not funny, guys. I don't want no kids to go through what I went through. It's not funny. I'm not, it's not funny. It's. Whew, I'm laughing. It's like a defense mechanism. Like, I'm laughing to keep from crying. You know? I laugh a lot, smile a lot to keep from crying, to keep that pain, that hurt just swept under the rug. Hmm. Seven years of my life. Seven. Gone. Kids was one and five when I left. One in five, my son, my babies was crying. And I still left. Greed. Just greed. There's no other word to explain it, just greed. It's not worth it. It wasn't worth it. It took a lot for me to get up here and tell my story. These young kids that's growing up thinking, I ain't going 50-50 with no nigga, tricking that. That's not the lifestyle. That is not the lifestyle. I I read the article on you. They caught you with seventy thousand dollars worth of diamonds. Twenty-four years old. 
$70,000 worth of diamonds. They said in the two day span that you spent in Boston, you racked up $120,000. There was this one line. They said, um, y'all had flashy clothes and incriminating receipts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they eat, <laughs> yeah, they eat y'all up in that article. <laughs> they eat y'all up. I mean, <laughs> yo, they drew a map of every place y'all hit and how much money y'all spent in every store. They say y'all look so good that nobody would question. They interviewed the people in the, the merchants. <laughs> They said, how would we know? They had the best clothes. They knew everything about the stones that they were purchasing. How'd you get caught? It's <laughs> funny you asked that. We were on our way to go sell the diamonds. And I did a legal U-turn. Mm. Cops pulled us over. It's the little things that get you caught. It's the little things that get you caught. Came to the, you walked to the car. Can I get your um, registration and your insurance and your driver's license? Gave it to him. He went to the car and came back to the car. I have proper calls to search this vehicle. The young lady looked at me. I looked at her. We already knew it was over. We already knew it was a wrap. Because everything is in the car. Because everything is in the car, including the receipts. We are well away from the state. We back at home at this point. We scot-free. We back home. About to go do what we do when we come back home, take care of business. And like I said, I had a three-way search clause. I was on probation for an incident that occurred from one of my workers going inside the candy store and them calling the 800 number and it traced back to my apartment. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Getting too comfortable, too loose. Wow. Cause I mean, by this time you're what? Six years in the game? Six years in the game. I was 24, 20, yeah, 24 at the time. Oh, I mean, damn, your bill was $20,000 cash and you didn't have a dollar to your name. Didn't have a dollar to my name, a dollar. How does a woman making a hundred thousand dollars in a weekend not have a dollar to her name? Not have a dollar to her name. Only thing I had was assets. Jewelry and clothes and pocket looks. Wow. My drilling, rushing, like, what am I going to do? I immediately called my older sister. She said, I, you know, I tell her what happened. At this time, we still in the county waiting to get extradited back to the other state. We get there, like you said, bail 20000 not a dollar to my name. My sister told me to call H. I calls him. He say, what you crying for? I'm going bail 20000 Okay. Where, I'm, where are you going to take this money? He didn't take not just twenty. He took 25000 over to my friend. And who's age? Do you know? Who is this guy? The, the same guy we was on our way to meet to sell the, the loose stones to. He just pays your bill. Pays my bill. Never. Met him through my sister, my older sister. Didn't have no connections with this guy at all. I was just going to do business with him. He bonds you out just like that. Bond me out just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, just like that. I'm like, is this guy Santa? What is going on? I mean, I'm crying. Right. 
Like we in we in a state where they do heinous crimes where mm. it's terrible. Right. That's crazy. I wish I could call somebody right now for $25,000. Shit, I could use it. <laughs> you know, when your name ring in the streets, it's, it's a different story. Yeah. No, that's the truth, though. It's a different story. That's the truth. You, you were who you said you was. When you get sentenced, I know earlier you mentioned seven years. What was you thinking when that judge banged the gavel and, and, and told you, you got seven years. He didn't say seven years. He said 84 months. And I didn't understand it. So I went back to the bullpen and this guy, he was like, Ma, how much time you got? <laughs> I'm like, I got 84 months. He's like, damn, what you doing? <laughs> In your mind, when they say months, you don't think. Yeah, right. I'm not thinking like, I'm like 84 a month. <laughs> oh, shit. I get back to that boy. He's like, damn, what you do? Kill somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. I'm happy we could laugh about it now. You laugh about it now. But at the time, it wasn't funny. But at the time, it wasn't funny. Seven years of your life. Seven years of my life gone. Where's that bail money? Where, where's, where's, you know, are, are your, are your people's there for you? The, the person you got locked up, how much time did she get? What? How much time did the girl that got arrested? Huh? You? Oh. I went down by myself. No code offense. You mean CIA one and CIA two? Hello. They ratted on you? They didn't have to. My friend, dad, it was the, see, he was a, a, a FBI agent at the time. What? And she ripping and running with you? And she ripping and running with me. She on the phone. Ain't do a day. Ain't do a day. So, then went back and collected that bail money. Oh, shit. Because you get it back when the case is exactly. dismissed or non, what is it, non something, non something, non process. Mm -hmm. The feds have picked up the case, so. That money goes straight back to. That money goes straight back to the person who bonds you out. But H gave her that money. But H gave her that money. H gave her 25, to be exact, like I told you. So she... The five just to get. Right. To the next state, take make sure we taking care of plane fight all that. She took that too. She took that. They robbed your crib. Robbed my crib blind. Took everything. These are my friends though. This is my play sister and my friend. They heard I had seven years. Took everything. And then the crazy thing about it is my kid's father see them in my stuff. They threw it on. They threw it on. They put that shit on. <laughs> <laughs> like. Oh, shit. Oh, I just seen. They put that shit her on. Her your LV runway back. Okay, did you get it? Mm. No. This is my kid's father. I mean, I'm not even going to ask if if they wrote you or if came to see you what? or phone call. Child, or even give, give the, my kids some money. Wow. Absolutely not. What was the hardest part of that sentence? Been away from my children. Mm. Been away from my kids, not seeing their faces, not waking up to them every day. You told me that your son begged you not to go. And you went anyway. 
man, there's a lesson there, right? Like, because we, we talk about, you know, I'm doing this for my kids. I'm mm -hmm. making sure my kids is good. I'm making sure nobody got to... I'm leaving an inheritance. I'm doing this as my legacy, but it's really for us. Mm -hmm. It's really our greed. Because if we really believe that, we wouldn't be putting ourselves in these compromising situations. Absolutely. Wow. Ah, man. I, I just know that's going to that's gonna speak to a lot of us. Especially we would parents. not be putting ourselves in a compromised situation that's if right. it was for our children. That's right. That's right. Are you the model inmate? Do you do everything right? <laughs> do you coach Do you get early release? I know. I know the feds is eighty five percent. No, absolutely not. You still get into it. I'm still circumventing the system, even in federal prison. Having my mom, my mom was bringing me contraband like crazy. I was selling pills, selling lip gloss, Ooh. anything. <laughs> Anything she can bring me, I'm selling. You just can't walk away from me. I just can't walk away. Like, I don't know. I was... <sighs> mm -mm. Yeah, it was terrible. I was terrible. So you did all 84 months? I did every single day. I started off in Dublin. Then I ended up in Wasika. Minnesota. Mm. You come home, 2012. What is getting acclimated back into society like? How are you going to sort of, I don't know, get on your feet, get your kids? It was tough. Yeah. It was tough. Um, That's a long time. It's a long time. And then I went to a different state to do my halfway house. Mm. Or initially where I caught my case at, which is Virginia. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I had, before I left, I had did, I had put some money into some CD stocks. Me not knowing, duh, you owe the feds. I wasn't thinking about that. I'm thinking about getting this, this money that I put in my kid's name transfer over my name. You got restitution. I have restitution. How much money did the stocks appreciate to? I want to say about 80, between 80 and 90,000. You thinking you coming home to this 90 thinking pack? Thinking I'm coming home to this money. Transfer it to my name. Feds took it. Feds take it. Oh, gosh. Do you go back into the game? Does that itch still, like, I mean, in my mind, mm -hmm. if I knew how I was running it up and that shit just happened to me. What you gonna do? I'm going, I'm sorry, because, only because I, I, I'm defeated now. Now I'm defeated. I'm defeated. Even if I was going to take this 90 and do something positive with it, now it's like. But it's not about me. What did you do? <laughs> oh I got back in the game. You go back. I met this guy while I was in Virginia on my way to my job that I was currently working while I was in the halfway house. And we get acquainted and, you know, I tell him, we talking, I tell him some things. He, <clears throat> he realized that I wasn't from Virginia. He asked him what I needed. I tell him, he get it, and I hop back in there. So you go from the halfway house back to jail? Yeah, but that wasn't for that. I went for it because I had two cell, two cell phones in a halfway house. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, but you don't get locked up again? Yeah, I get locked up. Again? Again. For having the two cell phones in the halfway house. All right, but yeah. when you start getting back into the life... No, I didn't get locked up again. <sighs> okay. No. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> no, I did entertainment. Know. Please don't get me indicted. <laughs> <laughs> I did not, I didn't. 
Okay. Yeah. There, there, there's, there's, there's promise there. What do you do with your life? Do, do, like, do you start? I know you can't probably work your own job and stuff like that. Like, what do you, what do you start? Are you saying later on? Yeah. I ended up. Um, so I started out doing fitness training. From fitness training, I went to um, doing body contouring. Mm. Opened me up a body contouring business. I have my phlebotomy license in, and I'm a licensed esthetician. Wow. So now that same boss mentality, that same boss that you were, you still are, but now you're using it the right way. The right way. Hmm. That is, that is, um, that's phenomenal. What's something you tell your younger self? Maybe that eight. 17, 18 year old girl that first gets put onto the life and she sees that she could walk out of the bank with $6,500 with a phone call at the teller. Robbing the bank with a phone. Robbing not worth it. Really? It's not worth it. Any day away from your family, away from your kids, away from your loved ones, it's just not worth it. Any regrets? It was a lesson. It was all divine timing. God aligned my life exactly how he aligned it. That's why I went through every hardship, every all those turmoils, all the backbiting, all the robbing, all the stealing. I went through all that to get where I am today. You ever been robbed? Several times. Not only by my friends, rob by my family. Robbed at a gas station. I was known for having diamonds. Denise diamonds. Like when trademark that, that shit go go <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Denise diamonds. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> Denise the millionaire. How about that? <laughs> what do you do now? I'm an investor. I would love to know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I invest into real estate. I mean stock market. I'm an I, investor. I, I you you must be an extraordinary investor because you My have son a... retired as mama. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's that's all we gonna say. His, my son retired his mother. Yeah. I've I've, I've never. I, <laughs> I talked to a I talked to a lot of guests, and maybe this is too much information for y'all. But we had the conversation seven days ago. Mm -hmm. You're on the other side of the world. On the other side of the world, Chris. This woman <laughs> booked the <a> flight. <laughs> this woman booked the makeup artist. Her driver is outside, pulls up with a $35,000 bag, $50,000 watch. 50. Oh, that's, oh, sorry. Oh, I, it's a patek. Get it right. Oh, I, I, I have no idea how, how much her watch costs, okay? Um, yo. <laughs> Somebody say you still in the game. You sure this is real estate <laughs> and son retiring their mother? No, all jokes to the side. My son retired me. My son, my 20 year old. He retired his mother. This is Trapping Anonymous. My name is Chris Styles. Let's get it. <laughs>